So good evening and welcome to the select board meeting of November 8th, 2017. It's a joint meeting with the Amherst Housing Authority to, uh, to appoint uh, a new member to replace someone who has uh, resigned their position. Um, it is currently 538 for our starting time here. Um, a few things to start with. I'll, uh, I'll uh, outline the process we're going to follow, just so everybody's aware of what we're going to do. Does and the authority call its meeting to order? What's that? Do we call our meeting to order? I you probably could yes. since you posted yeah. it. So, if you so got yeah. um, I would call the meeting of the Amherst Housing Authority to order at um, 538. There you go. That'll work. Okay. Okay. So um, there's a few process things. We, we've fortunately or unfortunately done this a couple of times in the last year, so we're a little more familiar. But nonetheless, um, the way in which we go about this is uh, there's a whole process we go through as far as you know knowing about a vacancy, making notice publicly of that, asking for uh, letters of interest, which you folks have uh, supplied to us. Um, we were hoping to have a meeting earlier. We couldn't do that, so now we're having it tonight. Um, the other thing I will mention at this point before we get into the actual nitty-gritty of sort of how the order of events is going to happen is uh, the following. Ms. Kruger has the dis distinct pleasure, I guess, of serving on both the select board and the housing authority. We checked with legal counsel. She actually does get two votes tonight. And so the majority will be out of, <clears throat> will be out of nine. Uh, so, and she gets to count twice. So she could vote two the same, two different, whichever she chooses to do, but she does get two votes. And majority will be the, will be the uh, deciding factor. And I'll get into that in a, in a minute. So first we'll start out, um, and we'll, we'll do introductions in a moment, but I'll talk about process for a second. Um, this is filling a, a, a resignation. You will have the position until the election in March. You're certainly eligible to run for for election at that point, you will be not. If you do choose to run, you will not be listed as an incumbent on the on the ballot. Um, you don't get the privilege of being an incumbent in that way. The election that happens in March will fill the position uh, for the remainder of the term. So that will go until Mr. Jessup, I believe, was was who had, had resigned his seat. Um, his uh, position on the AHA runs until March of 2019. So you get the pleasure of running and then running again a year later. Um, so that's uh, the, the nitty gritty of, of that particular process of, of how long you'll hold this particular, and then if you run for an uh, election, how long you'll hold that one before the uh, re-election cycle starts. So we'll start, we'll have each of you give an opening statement of two minutes each. I will keep time, not super strictly, there's not a big warning bell that's gonna go off. I'm gonna try to keep an eye, an eye on the time, but not be too uh, rigid about that. And then we will go through each of the members of the boards and have them ask you a question um, and we'll have each of you answer. And so if you open the question and she does the second, then when the next question, we'll reverse those. So we'll go back and forth in that regard. Your answers will be two minutes in length. Um, at the end of the, of the time, we'll, you'll each get a minute to do a closing, uh, a closing statement. Um, we do have to do the vote in front of you in public with a roll call. And I will say now, it's very uncomfortable for us. So just because one of us does or doesn't vote for you, don't take it personally in any way, shape, or form. We often have very good candidates for this, and we have to make a choice. And so the, the majority for uh, uh, being selected will be five out of nine votes. So there are five on the select board and four on the, on the housing authority, and so you'll need five to to get that, and we will record those full votes. Um, as far as how we'll go through our questioning and our voting, um, I believe what we'll do, we'll alternate between select board and housing authority. I'm gonna, question asking, I think I'm gonna do in reverse alphabetical order just for a change of pace, and when we do voting, I'll do in alphabetical order. So we'll go reverse, and, and so we'll hopscotch back and forth between select board and housing authority membership as far as asking questions, and then we'll reverse that when we ask for roll call votes. So, any other details? Yes, please. So, I was simply going to suggest that, um, unlike the last time when we had a whole lot of candidates, we had to time and we asked the League of Women Voters to come in and help us with that. Right. I was going to ask if Mr. Bachelman, since he doesn't cast a vote, if he could be our timer for okay. us. And maybe, I, 
know if we should have you in the middle or something. But we're not going to wave a big red thing in right. front of you that says stop. But, but just, you know, if he starts to wave at you, it's probably time to wrap it up. I guess is maybe the best way to do that. We won't. Like what five this? seconds. Right. Yeah. So, um, no, yeah. two minutes for opening remarks, two minutes to answer questions, and then the closing remarks are a minute each. Um, any other questions by anybody? on either board as far as before we get started anything procedurally we need to mention before we get going so in the very unscientific way I will pick a number and one of you will between one and ten and the closer of you two to it will go first as far as opening remarks and that'll start us off so I've got a number in mind what number would you pick and what number will you be? Seven. Seven. Seven is closer to the number I picked, which is eight, so you get the pleasure of going first. So, uh, we'll have you give an opening remark for two minutes, then we'll have him. I guess I should introduce you, you <laughs> since I haven't said your names. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and of course, do I have them handy? Yeah. But it's, uh, thank you. So it's David Williams and Barbara, Barbara Steinmetz, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so Ms. Steinmetz, if you would be so kind as give us your opening remarks. Okay. I'd like to thank both the boards, the select board and the AHA board for allowing me to interview for this position. Um, I think the most important thing to me as far as housing goes is I'd like to see everything stay up to par and maybe um, get some more affordable housing in um, the Amherst community, and um, also I've seen more programs to, to get the tenants more aware of um, handling their finances and handling their nutrition and um, doing that the best way they can and using their money to the best of their ability. I've lived at Ann Wayland for 10 years now, and um, I've been pretty active in the community. I've also been an officer for the Ian Wayland Tenants Organization. I've overseen um, picnics that the Tenants Organization put on, also holiday parties and decorating the building for the holidays. Held weekly coffee hours to discuss concerns of the tenants. Held an exercise class for tenants. I have volunteered in the office at AHA, which has given me insight into the AHA programs. Sorry, I'm a nervous right here. That's all right. <laughs> Take your time. 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, you know, help out a little. <laughs> Last year I was on the search committee to fill the position as the executive director. I very much enjoyed it working with three of the um, board members on that committee. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Williams, if you would be so kind. First of all, I want to say thanks very much to uh, the select board uh, and also the housing authority for making adjustments in your schedule to accommodate an interview with me. Uh, I am uh, very thankful for that. And my presence here tonight is a presence of uh, an indication of my interests of uh, the town of Amherst. I have lived here, my family and I have lived here in Amherst for uh, 21 years. Um, I'm a retired educator, as indicated in my letter. Uh, my wife just recently retired from the University of uh, Massachusetts. Um, I have one son who graduated from Amherst High School. And I believe that I uh, had uh, uh, the skills uh, and maybe understanding of uh, some of uh, the major issues that we are confronted with as a country, society, not only in Amherst, <coughs> with affordable housing. Affordable housing is a challenge nationwide. 
and uh, it's an issue that I feel that need additional attention to um, address the broader issue of affordable housing. I've uh, um, had experiences in housing, uh, not the, on the side of affordable, but the side of being rejected as an African-American male, young male right out of college, uh, uh, attempting to secure housing for my family and had to deal with the ups and downs and that, but I survived. Thank you. So, um, so again, at this point, we'll take questions from each of the members in turn. Each of you will answer. Since you started that, then he'll answer the first question. Uh, the responses are two minutes each. Um, as I indicated, I'm just going to go reverse alphabetical order with questions, and then we'll go alphabetical order when we vote, just to make it nice and complex. Um, I'll have Ms. Kruger from an order of question standpoint, since she's sitting with the uh, authority, I'll have you be in that group which makes you alphabetically last, interestingly enough. <laughs> so. I can go with it. But that means that the first question is Mr. Waltz to ask. Okay, again, thank you both for coming here and for your interest. I, th you know, I think we're very fortunate here in Amherst to have civically active citizens who are concerned about social issues and social justice and good policy and people being involved in government. So that there are probably lots of people who would like to do this. Uh, you two came forward. Can you tell me what makes your contribution distinctive? That is, what can you bring to this task that almost no one else can? Well, I will bring to the board, um, uh, I, I think, number one, a listening ear, ear to uh, find out more about the challenges that we are confronted with here in the town of Amherst. I think that I have uh, will bring also skills, having worked with a number of nonprofits uh, throughout my professional career, uh, the boards that I have served on, and having to deal with uh, some of the issues that uh, we are confronted with uh, uh, with the housing authority and providing affordable housing for low income, disadvantaged individuals. Uh, I have worked in that arena and have a, I think, a pretty good handle on uh, understanding the challenges that individuals have when they are uh, confronted with issues of this nature. Uh, I have the experience of working with um, city uh, officials uh, as we have addressed issues of housing. Um, in several occasions, uh, whether it was for affordable housing or housing uh, for students, um, I have worked with that and understand some of the process. I don't understand all of it, but I understand some of it. Thank you. Um, I think one of the important things is that I'm a tenant and um, it gives me a good handle on what goes on as far as living in the affordable housing. Um, I also worked in the office as a volunteer and have a pretty good handle on how things are, are handed down and, and um, decided in in the office. Um, I think it's really, really important that we put more programs uh, available to people and I would will be willing to do this to help them financially and um, with other issues to make their communities better. <coughs> okay, thank you. So that um, make a note here, sorry. Uh, so our next question will come from Ms. Kruger, and you will answer first. So let's just take the question, please. I'm, I've written it down, so that's not checking my mail, but reading my question. Um, 
Sometimes a tenant or an applicant for tenancy comes before the Amherst Housing Authority Board of Commissioners and wants the board to remedy their issue. Sometimes they're angry and upset or bring a lot of um, emotion to the issue and that might be understandable. How would you handle an occurrence like the one I'm describing? The first oh, we're Ralton, any, right? Yep. Sure. Yes, yes. First of all, I think we should um, make sure that it's the proper tenant that's getting upset about things because tenants have to stand up for their own rights. <coughs> they can't expect other people to do it for them. And very often other people want to do it for them. And it, it ties everybody's hands. So um, I think that needs to be discussed and people need to be made aware of that. And um, the best thing you can do is to try to let them calm down. And if they don't do that, say you're going to have to wait and talk about it at another meeting when things are better. And um, in most situations that I've seen, it's really a case of the wrong person speaking about the wrong situation. So that needs to be clarified. And um, we have to be careful with what we say to tenants so we can't be too flippant with them because that, that just irritates them more and gets them more riled up. And uh, sometimes they can't see why there are certain rules and regulations that everyone has to follow in order to keep things orderly. And uh, I, th I think that's the important thing to point out to them. But they need to understand that and we need to calm them down and just slow the whole situation down. Great, thank you. Mr. Reyes. I think for me, uh, number one, if the person is coming in angry, upset, um, try to encourage them to settle down. Yes, I will listen to you, but you need to calm down and uh, present your situation to me so, or to the board so that uh, uh, we get a clear understanding of what it is, what your challenges are, uh, whatever is going on. And I think uh, communication is key. Being able to listen to one, even when they're angry, you need to be sure that you're listening, paying attention to what is being said because there may be another message in the conversation that you need to hear that you may need to address that the individual may be overlooking or really not bringing to you the issue that he or she should bring to you. So listening <coughs> and communication. Thank you. All right, next up is Mr. Steinberg. Uh, well, thank you very much to both of you for being here and for your interest in our housing authority, serving on the board. Uh, serving on any board, uh, there's, it's important that you work together effectively as a group, but it's also important that each of you bring your own experiences and your own wisdom to the board. So uh, many times you will agree, but there are times you may disagree. And uh, so what I'm going to ask you about is whether you have had any experience working on a board or in some similar activity in the community uh, here or elsewhere where there has been disagreement within a group that you work together on a usual basis and how you contributed to helping um, achieve a unified result and achieving peace in the group. 
to you to start this one. Okay, thanks. Well, um, <coughs> disagreement, agreeing and disagreement is a part of the process. As we move forward, that everyone's not going to agree and support what is going on. And in fact, I would even begin to question if everything that is presented to me or to the board, we all agree 100%. I am looking for individuals to think about what you're saying, what you're doing, looking at the broader issues, how will this affect what we're doing, how will it affect others who may not even be involved. And it's all right to disagree, but we need to have that understanding that we are a board. We have major decisions to make. We are making decisions about one's life or livelihood. Uh, so we need to look at the broader picture and we can agree to disagree and keep moving if it's in the best interest of what the, whatever the challenges are that have been brought to us. Thank you. Steinmetz. Yes, um, I think that probably with any, any board that's worth its weight, they are, they're going to be able to come to some kind of a decision which might lend to both sides. Um, I don't quite know how to answer that, I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, let's see, that was Steinberg. So next up is Mr. Jefferson with his question. Who am I asking first? Uh, Ms. Steinmetz will be first. Okay. My question to you is, how are you going to deal with the tenants in the building that are going to come to you with problems that relate to the housing authority? Have you thought about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would lean them towards coming to meetings, board meetings, and, and discussing what their problems are and um, take it from there. And I, I can't solve their problems alone. Mm -hmm. I don't intend to. Okay. What's that? Yeah. So, Mr. Williams, if you would address that question as well, as far as... Same. Right. Well, the question, that, if I understand <coughs> the question, um, would be somewhat difficult for me because I, 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 if I heard the question correctly, how are you going to deal with the tenants in the building when they come if you are uh, on the board and you are living in the same uh, facility? Um, that, uh, I, I, I personally think it would be a challenge because uh, the tenants will be expecting you to uh, go beyond your role as a board member to be sure that everything is um, A-OK -okay for them. Uh, so I see it, from where I sit, I see it as a challenge now. Um, All right. <clears throat> so next up is my question. So I will. Uh, so it'll be first to you and and to uh, and Ms. Um <clears throat> I'll sort of build on that as as well. Um, so separate from um, you know particular tenant. Uh, questions that come before you, um, are there any particular things that any uh, particular <clears throat> either actions, uh, programming, uh, et cetera, that you think the housing authority should be taking on uh, as part of their role and responsibility uh, as far as a next step, a thing that you haven't seen them doing that you think they should be doing? 
Really, I, I don't think I can give a, a good answer to that because uh, I, although I have observed some of the activities that have been taking place here in the town of Amherst, I have not been that involved. Uh, I saw something in the newspaper maybe a month ago that uh, really was a red flag came up for me uh, involved in the housing authority when I read an article about uh, someone who had built uh, apartments here in the city and there were supposed to be X number of apartments available for affordable housing, but somehow or another they were rented out and uh, the owner now trying to ask people to move out of that. I, I just, I saw that and I read it twice. I said, how does this happen? Something is wrong somewhere. Could you just tell me the question one more time? So, are there particular uh, things you think the board should be doing that it isn't currently? So, either a programming that you think they should be doing, or things they should be in, looking into, or next steps they should be taking on things they've already taken up, anything of that sort. sort of what, what do you see as a, a direction or a, a new idea that, that they might want to take up as a, a, as a topic to, to wrestle with? I, I think there should be more education of tenants, and um, that includes Section 8, it includes um, other state-funded um, groups, that are, and Whalen it is, gets a lot of programs because we're right there, the office is right there, and everything happens right there. But all the people that are at the other sites don't tend to get what we get. And I think it's important that they do get that. I think this presidential apartments thing was uh, not not the problem of the housing authority. And um, they shouldn't be held accountable for it. Next is Mr. Burkhardt. Uh, boards like this can easily just go through the motions of the, re the regular transactional business that has to happen and spend, uh, spend plenty of time just getting that done. It's a task in itself. In your experience, to what extent have you seen boards or groups of people go beyond just that and be able to really move an organization in a new direction? And I ask that because we're in a time of a real budget restraints there's a lot of need out there. Um, we have a lot of things that demand attention, just keeping the ship afloat. But if we're to go in a new direction or bring something additional, uh, we're going to have to pull that off. What, in your experience, uh, tells you how boards can, or groups of people can do that? I guess I'm addressing you first. Mm -hmm. so, Wade, yeah. Oh, no. You gave yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <coughs> That's a good one. There are some funds available for for certain programs, and um, it's not a lot of money, but there's some there, and I think it should should be used to the advantage of the tenants. Um, as far as going forward and, and getting more housing and, and that kind of issue. I guess everything is pretty tight right now, and there really isn't a whole lot that people can do. But I do think that um, if we made the effort, things can be done pretty inexpensively, and um, they can be very helpful to, to the tenants. The issue that you are raising goes beyond the housing authority. You have a town issue. 
that must be addressed from the leadership, from the top down. If you're going to bring about change, if the town of Amherst decide that uh, affordable housing is an issue that we need to address or give more attention to, then the town need to uh, get behind or get in front and lead to be sure that the select board and also housing authority have the support and work with us to get this done. We are, the town of Amherst is going through uh, a, a transformation, I would say. When you look at what has happened in Amherst in the last 10 years in terms of housing, you look at what is happening downtown. I live over in the North End. You look at the condominiums and apartments that we are, that's being discussed to be built there. When you look over by Domino's Pizza, the apartments that, I don't know what that is still in Amherst or Hadley, but uh, the building, okay, because it said the parking lot is in Hadley and the apartments will be in Amherst. Those are areas, if we're looking at building the city, this is a university town. Housing will always be a challenge because you have college students, 20, 25,000 college students here, but we also need to remember we have a town that we need to address. When those students go home in the summer, when we are here and some folks, are there, oh, they're gone. But uh, we'd love to see them come back in September because uh, of the economy. So we have to decide, the city, the town, have to decide how we're going to move forward and not just say, well, when we get to that, we'll, no, can't do that. Ms. Brewer, I believe you're interested. And it will be Mr. Williams to answer first. So, Assuming you've attended at least one regular posted meeting of the Amherst Housing Authority Board of Commissioners, so you've seen them in action. Um, I know you can't watch them on TV like you can a lot of other things. Um, I'd like to get a sense of if you've done that, some reflections you have on that, in particular, having seen that, or not, as the case may be, how you view the board's role. I know there was a lengthy description provided online before you guys applied about things the board does, but perhaps a, a little reflecting, and I was really glad Mr. Burkhardt asked this, there are just things that have to be done. There's paperwork that has to be signed. There are agreements that you have to understand and that you, know, you have to understand the rules behind so that you can agree that those rules have been met. But beyond the paperwork issues, how do you view the Amherst Housing Authority, not the Housing Authority, the employees, but the board's role in terms of interacting with employees and interacting with tenants and also interacting with the larger community. Where does the board fit into doing all of that? Or is their job to just sit there and sign off so that bills can get paid and agreements made? How do you, how do you envision that happening based both on your own head and what you saw when you watched the news? Yes. Well, um, you're talking about a, a board versus uh, the clients uh, that you, you're working with. And the board is to be here to provide leadership and support. And uh, I would expect in, in this case, as uh, we move forward, the board needs to decide for itself as a board uh, the goals uh, of the board. And in setting the goals for the board, then we need to be set jointly with um, whatever organizations are within the, um, uh, the various tenants or organizations that we have to be sure that we are, uh, I would say that the agenda is not our agenda. We are carrying forth an agenda for those individuals who are living in the housing that the city, state, I, I'm sorry about that, town, <laughs> state, or, or, or government-owned housing. 
we need to be sure that we are working for, if you want to say, our clients. Because they are the clients. And they are expecting us to uh, see that everything move forward. And as a board, uh, we need to be sure that the attention is given to that, the planning is given to that, the understanding of the needs and concerns of the individuals who live in the housing. I look at uh, in reading the annual report for March, uh, your March last year's annual report. I was surprised to see that the waiting lists of uh, the number of individuals who are waiting for housing, the years that they've been waiting on housing, and the question someone needs to be asking is why? Why such a large number? What are we doing as a town to reduce that number? I don't know whether the numbers have reduced each year, but it doesn't look that way just reading the March, uh, uh, the um, 2016 report uh, that was done in March. Just nine minutes. I really think that one of the important things that needs to be brought to the front here is um, the amount of housing that's needed. The, the lists of people that need to be in housing are horrendously long. And um, I see it could become even more of a problem now that we're a sanctuary city. Um, also, it seems like the board gets through the, the regular stuff that they do every month. And there isn't that much time for the tenants or for talking about <coughs> new programs. And um, I think that that should be taken into consideration. Not everybody wants to stay at meetings longer and longer and longer, but um, I, I do think that that's an important thing. Um, and sometimes there's, there's nothing that the board itself can do because the tenants are just out of control. And you have to let go of that. That's, that's the only way you're gonna get by it. I mean, people just, even people with nothing think they're entitled. So, it can be a situation where you, you, you can't really calm it down. And you just have to let go of it. But um, <coughs> the, the important thing is that we have more housing and we have more programs. Great. Thank you. So next up is Ms. Boutelier. Thank you. Um, kind of sort of touched on some of the issues with, with the question. Um, so I'm looking for just a little bit more detail, that much. Um, so my question, and I'm starting with Mr. Williams, I, I believe, correct? Actually, it's her turning over. Starting with Ruth. Oh, okay, right. I apologize. Um, okay, <clears throat> what are some issues in or with affordable housing that you see, and how would you suggest approaching them? that I see with affordable housing. Um, I think a really important thing that people don't understand and, and really it should be brought to the forefront is that there is a certain process that you go through to get into housing. People will say, oh, I've been waiting for housing for so and so and so long. And so and so just filled out an application and they got through. Well, that's not the case usually. I mean, I've never seen that happen. And um, only if it's an emergency would it happen. Um, I, I think that's one of the biggies. That we, need, we need to let the tenants know that there are 
definitely certain paths we have to go down to get <coughs> certain things accomplished. And um, it's the same for everyone. Mr. Wentz? If I heard the statement correctly, it's process. Well, what are, what are the policies and procedures are? That's what we need to follow. The policies and procedures are not set for this group of people or that group of people. This is the way we operate. And we are expecting everyone to follow the <coughs> procedures and the uh, housing authority, if it's our response, the, the housing authority's responsibility to see that that happened. Uh, this is, um, we have to treat people fairly, and people need to understand it. And we need to be able to explain to someone why something happened the way that it happened. And it didn't happen because, oh, I happen to have known David Williams, so I'm in. It's not about that. Thank you. Great. So, We've each gotten to ask our question. So each of you will get an opportunity for a one minute closing remark. Um, now I'm trying to block the question. Oh, I, first. I believe. That's right. So Mr. Williams will end up worked out nice and even. So we'll get one minute for a closing remark, and she will get one minute for a closing remark. So if you'd like to, to sort of sum up, if you would, please. Well, in my remarks, I would say to you that. Um, as I have outlined in my letter of application, I believe that uh, I um, will bring to this position um, experience in working with, um, I would say nonprofits, I'll just put it that way. I haven't worked in city government, so town government, I'm not going to say that. But working in, 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 in nonprofits where you're having to deal with some of the issues that are confronted by the housing authority, when you think in terms of United Way, when you think in terms of the Urban League, and those uh, organizations that I have been involved with, and have been involved with them for the last 40 years. Everywhere that I have lived, I have decided that I need to give back to the community. I have been blessed as an individual to be able to move up the ladder because I didn't start at the top of the ladder. I started down there. And I was able to, through my education, and I'm willing to give back to citizens of the town of Amherst and work to bring about a change and to be sure that uh, the Amherst Housing Authority is second to nine. Thank you. Ms. Dimitz. Thank you for your time and consideration. I assure you that if I am given the opportunity to work on the AHA board, I will do my best to bring tenants and board members together working for the betterment of the Amherst Housing Authority. Thank you. So at this point, we've, we are at a point for a, a vote, but is there any discussion or questions that we have for each other uh, as, as the group of folks that have to make a decision? Does anyone need or want to have any other discussion before we take the vote? I'm not seeing any hands. So in that regard, we will just take our votes. Uh, I will do the reverse order of the way we ask the questions. And so I'm just seeking your vote, and you just Clearly state your name and your vote. I'll record that, and then we'll we'll. Uh, well maybe we'll this is a question I should have asked before you. Okay. Um, do we get to articulate our thinking when we vote, or is it something we should have some time to do first, or do we just vote? Well, yes. Our yeah. typical process is we do not do that. Okay. We have, however, having announced that then had situations where individual people making votes have gone ahead and given their thinking. <laughs> so it is entirely optional, but right. we do not have a point of time for deliberation amongst each other if that was being requested. But if you want to make a statement or just a vote, there is no 
way of preventing yeah. people from doing whichever <laughs> yeah, right. they we're, want this, to do. we're not going to come over and cover you up. And, you know, <laughs> not let you, you stop speak. talking. No, we'll, we hope that it's not a, you know, if you need to make a, a statement, uh, you know, let's, uh, I would hope that it's not uh, 45 minutes in length. That would be, be my request. But, but nonetheless, um, I'm personally seeking sort of votes, but if you need to sort of explain yourself, that's perfectly fine. And again, I will remind the candidates that it's really uncomfortable for so I have to do this in front of you again. We appreciate both of you for putting yourselves forward for this and in during this process out in public. And, and uh, again, you know, the, uh, the nature of the voting is is uh, there's no grayscale here. It's we did or we didn't, and so that's not a statement about your capability, skill, or willingness. And we appreciate all of those things that you bring to this process for us. So uh, again, I'm going to re sort of reverse the order we ask the questions. So say you get ask, you get to vote first. Who does? She does. And then Sorry. we'll go back and forth <laughs> between the groups. Two One two question: Are yes. we just saying which? Mm -hmm. Which we're in favor for? Yeah. Excuse me. We do go down for one, and then go down for the other. No, we'll we'll just announce the person that you think that you would vote for. Okay. Um, so, Tracy Lee Buccini, um My vote would be for Mr. Williams. Okay. And so next will be Brewer. Before I vote, I also want to make another clarifying statement. And as some of you might have noticed, I've been updating our sheet as we go along as to things we should have included <laughs> on here in terms of Can't what we are doing. Um, because we've been doing it long enough that you'd think more of the things would be written down. Um, is that when we vote, as we talked about at the very beginning, mm -hmm. in terms of the majority, there were some people at one time when we did this who assumed that we would stop voting once we got to the certain number and not everyone would cast a vote. That's not true. No, so please don't feel, no one should feel pressured about that. So um, my vote is cast for Mr. Williams. And now Mr. Burkhart. Uh, my vote's for Mr. Williams. And my vote, because uh, I'm next, uh, is also for Mr. Williams. And now it's Mr. Jefferson. Mr. Williams. And Mr. Steinberg. I'm going to vote for Ms. Steinmetz. And Ms. Kruger, you get the uh, luxury of two votes. So I just, I do want to, um, I'm going to preface uh, my vote with, um, I feel torn because I see some um, differences, this often happens. Uh, strengths, strengths with each candidate. Um, I've, I've long hoped for a tenant on the Housing Authority Board. Um, on the, the other hand, um, a strong voice and uh, uh, helping uh, move the organization um, and the board forward with, with certain skills. Um, so I, I am torn. Uh, and um, I'm only, I'm going to take one vote um, as a member of the Housing Authority. Um, and I'm going to, and I am torn, I'm going to vote for um, Mr. Williams. And for my second vote, because I'm very uncomfortable with two votes and it's kind of a fluke, um, I'm going to abstain. So I don't know how we record that, but it's a vote and then second vote is an abstention so that I don't. Double count. All right. So next is Mr. Wolf. Uh, Mr. Williams. All right. So at this point, we have seven votes for Mr. Williams, which is above the five of nine necessary for the uh, election to the uh, open seat on the on the housing authority. And so at this point, I believe I need to make a sort of formal motion, if I can find the right text on my sheet here. All right. Uh, oh, that's not it at all. It's good to me. I move by majority five, roll call vote, of which I just took, uh, to select David W. Williams, a registered voter of the town of Amherst to perform the duties of a member of the Amherst Housing Authority until the next annual election scheduled for March 28th, 2018. Yes. 
um, before anyone or it needs to be fixed. So it needs to say majority. I, I appreciate that was a cheat sheet for us, but it needs to say that seven votes were cast. And then we can record who did what. Actually, it, eight it votes were cast. Yeah, it should not say five. It was just, that was just a. Oh, that was held over? Out. That <laughs> was to help us understand what we were doing. <laughs> what we're looking for. No, we confused so, ourselves. All right. So move by majority Three. roll call vote of eight. Of eight. To select. Okay. And then the date's wrong. It's March 27th, 2018. Oh, thank you for. Yeah, it's easy you, to mix those two up. <laughs> right. So the 27th is actually uh, the election day, I guess, is yes. what that is, right? Mm -hmm. So is there a second for that slightly? Now I'll second it. Okay, so now we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, we'll just take a, a, a voice vote at this point because the roll call vote has taken effect. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so that's a unanimous of the motion, but the motion is also recording the actual roll call vote, which we took just a moment ago. And I believe that concludes this small portion of our meeting. And I thank you both again very, very much for coming and putting yourselves out in, in front of us and, and letting us go through this process. Uh, and I hope that you both uh, are uh, engaged with the Housing Authority, both in the short term and in the long term, and, and uh, continue to advocate for, for uh, affordable housing and the, and the tenants who live in that affordable housing for the community. Thank and you very much. Mr. Slotter, before the yes. Housing Authority adjourns, I'd just like to say, um, I think the mechanics of this is the selected member will notify the town clerk, and there's a, there's a notice and a swearing in process. Mm -hmm. What? Right, associate. Well, actually, Mr. Bachelman will have oh, right, but there make sure it, uh, we'll, we'll be notified. And I, I just want to say that there are other opportunities to be involved with the housing authority and the board. And there's often openings, and I would want to encourage, um, in this case, Ms. Steinmetz, to please stay involved with the board. And that I, I think you bring great value, and there will be opportunities for you to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. What's that? And just a further advertisement about mechanics. So, Mr. Thank Backelman you. will tell Ms. Puppel, and then you'll get you'll be able to get sworn in with the clerk, as Ms. Kruger indicated, so that you can go to your first meeting and have it count. Um, the of course, there's some material you need to read ahead of time before you do that. The other issue is that with the election coming up, nomination papers will be available in a couple weeks for that, and so for that next seat and so for everyone watching at home um, it'll be 50 signatures required because it's a town-wide election and there'll be a due date that's usually early in February in terms of when that's due and so it, but it'll be a one-year seat that's then on the that's on the ballot and no other housing authority commissioner seats are up on that ballot in this coming spring. If I could just really quickly since Ms. Turgeon is here executive director of the Amherst Housing Authority perhaps you get together with, with us selected board member just next meeting date and some of the materials so that you have this opportunity. Um, and with that, I'd entertain a, a motion to adjourn for the Amherst Housing Authority. So moved. Any second? Second. Yes. Okay. okay. And, and um, all those, they, they both did, so pick your, pick your second and um, so you couldn't see behind you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> yeah, I understand that issue. So all those in favor of adjourning for the Amherst Housing Authority. Aye. Unanimous Aye. four. Okay. Six um, thirty one if you're recording the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you all thank very you. much for thank coming you. and, sure. and uh, accommodating our, our schedule. So appreciate that. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. On to town meeting. What's that? I'm sorry. Isn't that fun? It's yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Great idea. A short recess and tough. Tough. <laughs> our thoughts as it were. It's tough. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we did that one the other day. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's all we're doing. Oh, okay. It's logistical. And who sent me? Just you? No, I think all of us are signed. They put, they put it for all of us and for the counties. Right. Okay. Everybody signs. All right. That's Joel said the other day. It's a belt and suspenders situation. It's a belt and suspenders situation. I like that. Belt and suspenders. Okay. Okay. So. It is, exactly. That's. I, yeah, we're still on camera. I know. Nice to meet you, and we'll be working together.
Thank you. Thank you for doing this. You guys are a tough group. I had a really hard time. Because I had to read them off of there. Oh, I'm sure. Really I thought I could just read them on my phone. My phone wouldn't bring one of them up. It turns out my phone was bringing the other one up. But I just choked because it was the first one. I was like, Jim, Jim, help me, help me. And then you didn't need it. No, I didn't need it. It's hard as it is. It's too funny. Yeah, yeah. It's painful. That's all right. So are you, are you ready? I am. We're going to see if the rest of the board's ready. Everybody else ready? All right, so we'll reconvene ourselves now after that brief recess. Um, I believe all we have is one, um, well, there are two other items technically on our agenda. I don't think that there are any logistical issues related to tonight's meeting, so I think that one will be uh, dispensed with unless, nope. there is well, one. you do have. Well, I might. Mr. Steinberg might, and the other is that, I mean, we, we saw the housekeeping part of things in terms of the school committee moving articles, too, so that feels like everything's scheduled for tonight, right. but it's not, um, is that, uh, now I'm spacing out, okay, so we did not know, but we, some of us have since heard in the community, perhaps, at least I have, that there may be a motion to refer Article 13, which is the first article that's up back to the town meeting coordinating committee and I didn't know if we felt the need to take a position on that or not. I know sometimes, I mean, first of all, it hasn't happened yet, but secondly, we, we that's one of the reasons we put this on our agenda mm -hmm. is so we can, okay. if we want to. Sometimes we have strong feelings about referral, sometimes we don't. Um, if we wanted to, it seems like, I should mention it. Now's the time. Yeah. <laughs> well. But I, I think a motion that would allow us to take a position would be in order. Okay. Um, so if, if something were to make such a motion, we could do that and consider the, you know, whether or not we want to take a position on, on so referral to, if it comes to up. To be clear, we would not recommend at this point the motion is not likely no. to be that we would recommend no. a referral, no. but instead that if were the motion, be, yes. If it were made. offered. So something like that, if Mr. Buckman wants to write that down, yes. I move that if Article 14 were to be... thirteen. Thirteen. thank 30. you so much. I'm looking yeah. at this 14 no, no. that I crossed off. No, no. Right. If Article 13, if someone makes the motion, not the select board, to refer Article 13 to the town meeting coordinating committee, then the select board should recommend to town meeting that they agree with that referral. Whatever the proper wording is. Recommend referral. Re right. It's just that I hate oh. to say recommend referral oh, because, because that it's makes it seem things. like right. we're referring right. it and we're not. No, we're Support. not. Support. Support. Supports a recommendation of referral. Okay. But we'll not make said motion. But I don't think is, is will not make has to be in our motion. Right. Okay. Is there a if, second? second? Second. Okay. No. I don't care. Pick, so there is pick a your second. Sec pick your second. <laughs> and I think Andy and I said it's the same. Thing. So is there further discussion? Does anyone else want to elaborate, Mr. Mr. Wall? As Ms. Kruger said, I don't have two minds about this, but for different reasons. I guess I'm, I'm stumbling over the logic. We decided it was a bad idea, so we're going to send it back to people who came up with a bad idea and tell them to make it better when they're winning their bad idea. <coughs> so I don't really see the purpose of this as opposed to voting it down. But could the idea be improved? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, I guess that's the, <laughs> then that difference. would be a reason to vote <laughs> no, against yes, supporting referral. That would be a reason. Yeah. Right. Right, and that's why sometimes we do have strong feelings about right. this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Particularly if the motion's to refer it to us and we don't want it. <laughs> so that's a different that's kind of thing. That's also a okay. factor. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, is there further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, you say aye. 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 Opposed? There's one. So it's a four to one, one vote. So. That way, if it comes up, we don't have to say, well, we don't know because we didn't consider that. We can so, say, ha, we thought of that too. All right. So are there any other sort of things regarding this evening? I do know, uh, just to t comment on order of events, uh, the articles 10 and 11 will be suggested to be moved to time certain. 
uh, this evening as well. Um, Directly oh. after 15, is that correct? Yeah, because 16 I think that's right. removed before 15. Right. I'm just um, again to remind people that I, I will not be here if we should go to Monday the 13th. And I think the only article I was responsible for was the final one, which is about the final end of life. Right. And it was just to say what our that we were taking no position. So if somebody else would be prepared to do that, so sure. you're not scrambling. If I will do be, go to Monday night. If if it ends up being on Monday night, then I will be happy to okay, take that. Okay. Just if it. What about tomorrow? I forget. I'm sorry. What's Thursday? your say? I won't be here tomorrow. Okay. So either, I, I, either this way. is, I, yeah. It's After tonight, I'm gone. So. Okay. Okay. Any other? I wouldn't be here tomorrow, but um, tell me he's not going to have it voting for Thursday night, so right. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's one other thing. Yes. Um, there is a school article about the regionalization, and somebody had mentioned that mm -hmm. they might want to put the, t the town of Pelham as being the concurring district. Um, I talked with town council about that. Whether that's uh, the superintendent's idea, was, thought was that that's up to the committee to decide, not town meeting to decide the concurring district. Um, town council felt that it was a within scope of the article to include town of Pelham, and he didn't think that it would, since all the supporting material was referring to town of Pelham, he didn't think it would harm the article, but it could wind up being a department of education decision. Aye. I understood what you meant, but I think what you just said was the town council said it was okay to do that motion, and it was in fed the moderator who said it was okay. No, to I talked to town council. They said it was yep. okay too. Mm -hmm. Yes. They just didn't think it was a particularly good idea. Correct. Because it could be right. up to the board that yep. because the way these are traditionally written is this weird loose way, and then all the different towns have all their different committees, and then they vote whether or not to come together. We've done this before several right, yep. times, and it doesn't mean that. They have to agree if the town comes up to if Agawam comes up and says we have one of these will you do this with us we can say no mm -hmm. but um, so limiting it up front so you're letting us know that it is legal to do such a thing so that's one thing that'll happen does that mean we should have if if that comes up then I would argue that we should have a position that we think that's a bad idea so I would not want the select board to re to support doing that because it falls outside the way this process is supposed to work and you're not supposed to limit who one committee can talk to another committee. That's not the way it works. So if we really, again, if that's like Article 13 just was, then it seems like a motion to not support the limitation for Article, is it Article 10? Um, on okay. so moved. just Pella. So moved. Do you like to second? Yeah. You're in the second. Yeah, I think that there's another question that I asked. Okay, so we, we have a motion in a sec, so now we can talk about it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. So this is, uh, this is uh, all in the same line. I'm not entirely sure, but I thought that the statute that <coughs> sets up the process for regionalization was specific on the wording of the motion that had to yeah. be offered. I thought so too. Yeah, Last time we that's, did it. That's why I'm concerned yeah. about this. Well, we don't have time and to I do can't it. now, in no. the next one minute, look up <laughs> but, the statute. Right, and town council I did a quick read. And this, I just talked to him like 10 minutes before the meeting started, and it was a verbal conversation. He did not do research on it, but he felt they did it. it would not necessarily harm the motion. He recommended that you stay with the original language as. It, without having done the research, I think on principle, I would be able to take a position against doing so. Right. I mean, um, if we uh, if we vote on this and um, we're going to in the end, email or the, no, you're on your the end result you're is a vote that uh, we um, suggest no, recommend no on that. I'll do my best if I can get access to the internet. <laughs> We're asking Mr. Wall to see if he can do it. it. Just speak it's Mass General heart. Law, Chapter 71, Just Sections 14, 14A and 14B. Okay. We so just remember being told last time we did mm -hmm. this at a special town meeting in what, 20, yeah, whatever. I, 12. Well, I've read, these, 11, I read the like statute that. many times. It's probably not ever read the recent Yeah, it's 71, Sections 14, 14A, and 14B. Thank you.
So, if I understand correctly, the motion is to not recommend the amendment. It would be an amendment to the motion. Right. It would be a so we would take a vote on the amendment, mm -hmm. and we would recommend against that amendment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought the correspondent went right. I thought the correspondent was superfluous anyway. But that was something in the email today. So, do we want to discuss it further, or do we want to take a vote on our position relative to an amendment to the motion? Not our motion, the motion. Tell me. You have to get confused here with all the motions and amendments and whatnot. Potential amendment that might Potential be made amendment. tonight. Yeah. tonight. Password again. Crazy password for this. This is asking for a password oh, again. Uh, I've got a oh, wait, no, I'm okay. connected now. I'm connected. It should be okay. Okay. It should have been so, stored there. Sorry. Yeah. Um, or do we think we need to take a moment and let Mr. Wall do a little internet surfing? Well, I mean, I really. <laughs> I don't like disagreeing with town council on camera, but uh, yeah, I remember the way Mr. Steinberg does. Right. That when we brought it before town meeting before, it was like, this is the language and this is what you get. And that's right. all you're allowed to say. Okay. Well, so, that might also help the moderator if that's well, known before the meeting, because he might not allow the motion we'll, it's not mm -hmm. legal, but. So is there, so all the, we do have a motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. And so do we, should we do a little research? Because if, if can we postpone voting for a minute and take up this other? We have well, that's, about that's the what time I was we thinking. We want to other yeah. thing while, while so we're all we're frantically yeah. trying our devices. Yeah. All right. So why yeah. don't we do that? I was going to suggest that. Yeah. So we're all thinking of the same <laughs> same thing. Yeah. So while folks seek internet confirmation of our <laughs> collective recollections, uh, Mr. Bachman, there was another item on our mm -hmm. agenda around the, our affordable housing tax incentive agreement. Right. That so you just uh, mention to us if you vote. Uh, and in February, you had voted the tax incentive agreement for the Beacon Communities Development um, called at North, uh, in North Amherst. Uh, based on that... Um, North Square at the Mill District. North Square at the Mill District, thank you. Um, based on that vote and the content of your vote, Town Council has um, developed an actual document uh, that would be signed between the town, the tax incentive between the town and uh, uh, Beacon Communities, uh, the group that's doing this. Um, so there, that is on your desk today. You, I sent it to you <coughs> earlier. It's been posted. Um, there are signature line items for the select board, uh, for the town manager, and for town council, and for representatives from Beacon, the president of Beacon. Okay. Wait, it was in our packet from last week. Right, but I think it was modified once more since uh, we last. Just to add the signature physically. line oh. item for town council. Oh. Right, so the, last the, the content was not changed. Not a word. It was just the signature page changed. Maybe I have the wrong desk tonight, but it doesn't matter. So that was the main thing, that the signature page changed, but otherwise the rest yeah, of the same. Identical. Identical. It is in our signed folder. We do need to sign that yep. this evening. Um, so any success on internet searching? But, um, uh, Mr. Slight, we don't need to vote because we already have. Correct. It's just That's the document right. 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 to be signed. Right. So we could start. Must be in the regs. It's not in Mass General Law. It's in the regs. Okay. It's there at all. Yeah. <laughs> or we're just, yeah. we're just yeah, well, parroting we'll what we thought we knew. Maybe we'll have a chance now that it's in chat. I still think we're still at the question as to whether we think it's a good idea. Yeah, on right. principle. So, we do have the motion. Um, are we ready to take a vote? I think so. I'm not seeing any objection to that. Okay, so, let's do it. I will, uh, I'll say all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? So that's unanimous, five to zero, to not recommend that amendment to the motion if it's made relative to that article. So I believe that concludes our agenda for this evening. Uh, so the only other things. thing I was going to bring up, yeah, please, Slaughter, um, real quickly, is that um, I have here an outline of, state, of, of points to make about the um, zero energy proposal mm -hmm. that's going to come before town meeting tonight. And I could offer to um, hand it around. It's not normally something we do, uh, but it is available for anybody who wants to comment on that. The one thing that I wanted um, that I'm going to be saying is a part of that, though, is, and the reason I'm bringing it up, is a statement that the select board wants to work with the petitioners as well as uh, other interested parties to try and achieve a result and uh, so it's just 
it's a statement of a commitment by the select board, and I think it was implicit in our discussion. Right. But I just wanted to point out that if I say it out loud, it's going to create this, you know, understanding right. that we are making that commitment. Right. And if there's any reservation, I just wanted to allow that. Um, I think what I remember from our discussion, we are committed to those general goals of um, reducing use, reliance on fossil fuels and, fuels and sustainability and wanting to look at adding r rigor to our process for instilling those values in, in town building projects. But I, I wouldn't want you to say we're, we're joining in zero net energy. That It's not that goal. It's the the direction of that, but it, so I wasn't sure from what you said, Mr. Steinberg, if you were saying we're joining with you in the goal of zero net energy or just advancing the underlying goals. I guess it was sort of like um, that we are, you know, we would like to achieve zero energy and we would like to get as close as we can if we can't get all the way. Um, right. That's probably a little further than I'm willing to go because I don't remember us saying that. I'm using the word zero net energy. Um, so, because I don't want to get into arguments later about did we try hard enough to get as close as we could? Right. Mr. Wall. I guess my recollection is either the same as Mr. Steinberg's or even beyond that, because I thought we were agreeing with the goal, because who wouldn't agree with the goal of zero net energy? If, you know, we're for all sorts of nice things. Our point was that given the practical realities of the planning process, finance, mm -hmm. and all sorts of other factors, we didn't think it was realistic to impose that goal upon the town. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were saying we'd be happy to work with the petitioners to find a way to reach that, you know, to move toward that goal at some point, but not tying us to a deadline or a particular process. So maybe it's a semantic difference, mm -hmm. but, you know, so it's going to be that we work with petitioners to craft a new resolution for the spring that we could both agree on, or, I don't know. So I didn't. I didn't see a, a contradiction between what we said and what Mr. Steinberg said, but it might be just me. Okay. Well, I, I think the way you phrased it, Mr. Wall, is maybe, maybe it does a better job of cutting the baby in half. Okay. Your fine, my or does that comport? I will uh, <laughs> understand it. I'll work on the language. Yeah. Sure. So you'll, you'll have some time, I think. <laughs> I think so. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. So, barring any other topics relative to tonight. I believe our agenda is complete, and so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we're adjourned at 6.50. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Media. Aye. And now we have our...